Released January 10th, 2022 by developer and publisher Pixel Sonic and Stephen Maloney for the Quest 1 and 2, the Rift and Rift S, and Windows Mixed Reality headsets. The first thing that comes to mind when I saw the trailer was Asteroids. And that's basically what this game is, a VR first person version of Asteroids from back in the day. This time, you're not in a ship, you're on a platform in space, dual wielding a variety of firepower. Thanks to the developer for the review key. I like to kick my reviews off with a story, but like I said, this is pretty much like that retro favorite Asteroids, so it's just an arcade styled wave shooter. You stand on a platform and in first person mode, you defend yourself against wave after wave of incoming asteroids, mostly. You've got 90 seconds to clear the area of whatever comes at you. Asteroids hurl towards you in all different sizes. They break in pieces when you shoot them creating smaller versions of the threat. And with the aid of power ups and a tolerance for this genre, you keep going till the waves end. That's as close to a story as I could come up with. If you're a fan of asteroids, old school arcade shooters, endless loops with no real campaign to speak of, then this is for you. The visuals here aren't bad. Well, they won't give you that go tell a friend vibe either. They're just right there on the border. The backgrounds look nice, but they seem static. It would be nice to see some activity back there. Comets hurling, maybe a satellite flashing lights, a dogfight in the distance. Something to make you feel a bit more invested and immersed. Also, I would have appreciated a bit more variety in these backgrounds. The asteroids are all wireframe. This is fine as a creative choice, and it also helps you see what may be behind a huge one. But I can't sit here and tell you honestly that I wouldn't have preferred textured asteroids instead. But still, no deal breaker. The gun models are a mixed bag. Your default weapon, the one you start out with, it looks incredibly basic, almost like a child's wooden gun from back in the day, or a nice wood carving, while later guns seem to have more detail. The particle effects used, particularly for the gun blasts, could use some work though. So, I'd sum up the visuals as basic but passable. There's nothing ugly here. And this is an indie effort, so props to the devs regardless. Over in the audio department, the music is good. It just gets a bit under my skin after a while, and this leans more on the gameplay than the actual tracks themselves. I'll explain in a bit. The gun sounds definitely did not work for me, much like the particle effects used to create muzzle flashes. I was not impressed. I like my firepower to have some oomph behind it, both in the visuals and sound department. All other sound effects, much like the visuals, are basic but passable as well. Let's delve deeper into gameplay. Like I said earlier, Astro Rocks feels like homage being paid to asteroids. Just in first person without the moving ship, you have three difficulty levels to choose from, each with its own distinct feel. Yeah, you will notice the disparity between easy and hard real quick. Each difficulty offers its own set of 10 stages to unlock. You're able to unlock new guns as you blast your way through each set of levels. In a bid to create a sense of replayability, all guns can't be unlocked on any one difficulty set. So if you want to see them all, you'll have to be willing to go through all 30 levels, which makes sense from a development perspective. There are a few options you can fiddle with as well, other than the difficulty before setting off on your battle with nature. You may want to check those out if the default doesn't suit you. So, you're out in the middle of deep space on a platform with no locomotion. The only turning options are click turning and physically turning your body. I really do not like click turning, though I understand it's supposed to help with comforting VR noobs or people prone to motion sickness. But even when I was new to this, I prefer nausea to click turning any day. So while it should be there for those who need it, there should always be a smooth turning feature in VR games. I never got why devs thought not having that option was acceptable. 
I'm going to go ahead and assume adding smooth turning requires more work. I don't know. Either way, I found myself physically turning and looking about. At least there's that. On the platform you stand on, there's a ring that surrounds you, which indicates your health, shields, how many asteroids you have left to destroy and the time you have left to do so. It also gives you an idea of where the closest threat is coming from. Depending on the difficulty you selected, you can have two force fields. One shield is for the platform, the other is for you. If they're both gone, well let's just say, you'll soon follow suit. Here's the main problem I have with Astrox. And problem is a strong word. Now, I know it's indie. I know it's also supposed to be casual. A somewhat retro styled homage to classic arcade shooters. But the thing is, if you're not really deep into that kind of thing, you may get bored with its repetition. Not only do you stand in place doing the same thing over and over, as that's not really the issue, as this is a wave shooter, but it's more the conditions you're presented with. Like I said earlier, the music is okay, but hearing it over and over while doing the same thing over and over, with no real enemy variety to speak of, I mean, there are the asteroids and this red thing that pops up, yeah, but that's about it. And there are no boss fights. The backgrounds, like I said, are static, with no noticeable variety. So yeah, Asterox feels like the kind of game that only works in short bursts. The kind of game that would be cool at a games night, especially if you had a few drinks in you. I've seen the leaderboards, so clearly people are investing time in this, and that's a good thing, but based on the limitations here, I see this game only being enjoyable by a small niche. And that's fine, as maybe that's who it was made for. I mean, it is a game that anyone can and probably would play, but only in small doses, which is fine, as it's priced accordingly in App Lab at $4.99. Support indie developers so they can remain inspired and motivated to keep creating the outside-the-box ideas the AAA studios won't. The link for Asterox is in the description. Like I said, it's priced accordingly. Check it out for yourselves. Asterox is by no means a bad game. It's not VR shovelware. Just light on its offerings, that's all. Thank you for watching. If you like my content, feel free to like, share, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Let's say I found a way to piss you off though. Feel free to hit those hate buttons like one of those big ass asteroids and asterox and keep it moving. Either way, I won't hold it against you. Our game is never over.